Science started early. I guess one of my earliest memories is my dad uh, had his own lab in the uh, University of Manitoba in the chemistry department. And he, I remember one time he brought home a couple of vials of clear liquid. I don't, to this day, know what they were. But we went down to the basement, he shut the lights off, and he poured these liquids together, and they started glowing, this soft blue glow, and it lit the whole room up. And uh, I was fascinated. I had no idea what it was. I was about six or seven, I think. Even younger than that, he would take me to his lab and do things like dip uh, a skipping rope into liquid nitrogen and then shatter it with a hammer. And I thought that was really exciting. And so that really got me interested in, you know, why does this stuff behave the way it does? How does it work? And uh, that was kind of, I guess, the early, uh, the early development of my love for science. So my dad's always been a hands-on tinkerer type. Uh, I remember when we had a, a VCR back in the early 80s when they were the size of several phone books stacked on top of one another that he would, uh, you know, I remember one time he had it open on the kitchen table and he's soldering into it. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, this part broke and I'm just fixing it. It just needs a new resistor is all. And, and I was amazed because it's such a complicated piece of equipment. And, and he's always been like that. When he was a student, um, they would take apart equipment in their lab that you know, at the university that they're learning at, at the U of M, and uh, try to figure out how it was working or if it was not working, how they could fix it. When he, uh, and this carried through into private life, so he bought one of the first color TVs in the city when they first became available in the late 60s, and he brought it home so that he could take it apart, not so that he could watch it, because he wanted to know how it worked inside. And so I've always kind of, uh, in some ways, emulated that a little bit. I mean, I, I don't have the technical prowess that he has, but I've always tried to fix things on my own if I could. And there are plenty of times when I just throw in the ranch, or I call him up and I said, Dad, I need your help to fix this because I broke it too far. Um, but in general, uh, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's got this great skill set for things like that, and, and so I've tried to emulate that to some degree, and it carries through to my lab. I, sometimes I like taking things apart and fixing them. It's a little bit different than what I'm usually doing, where I'm thinking about how cells are operating or a molecular pathway or something like that, and to get your hands dirty and, and build something. Um, it's kind of fun and it's very rewarding when you actually, against all odds, manage to fix it. And it's something that I, you know, I take great pride in. If I put it back together and there's no parts left over and the thing's doing what it's supposed to do, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun.